Travel photography has always played a very important role. It documents countries and people and cultures from around the globe. Well, today we talk about documenting Cuba with Kenna Klosterman on this episode of Behind the Shot. <laughs> Hi again, welcome to another episode of Behind the Shot, the podcast, where we try and get inside the mind of great photographers by taking a closer look behind one of their shots, from conception to completion, all the challenges and stories that happen in between. And today's guest is somebody I've known about for many, many years. But today is actually the first day that we've actually met face to face, or for lack of a better, uh, lack of a better phrase, face to face. Kenna Klosterman. Kenna, how are you? I am doing great, Steve. Thank you so much for having me. It really is so nice to to finally meet you in this kind of venue face to face, because I, I mentioned in the green room, I've known about you for years because of your connection with the online education site Creative Live. Where Absolutely. you've been, you've been at Creative Live how long now? Absolutely. Um, I have been part of Creative Live for eight years. So actually before it even became Creative Live, uh, as I first came as a student and uh, started volunteering for a year and a half before was hired uh, part time and then full time. And it has been quite a journey, as you have seen, Steve, as you've said that you have been watching for nearly that long. Yeah, I, I I was telling again, I was telling Kenna in the in the green room years ago when Creative Life first kind of hit the scene and became popular. Zach Arias was doing a class. I'm a big Zach Arias fan. I need to get him on this show. Um, And he's doing this one class and you and Susan Roderick were on laptop computers taking questions from Twitter and you took one of my questions. And I've been a fan of Creative Live ever since. I recommend it very regularly, actually, for people to go watch because the business model is is so unique in that you can watch an entire class live if you've got eight hours a day, five days a week. But if you really want to, the way I phrase it to people is if you want to watch a class, you can watch it for free. If you want to study a a subject, then you buy it. I mean, is that kind of a good summary of what Creative Live is? Absolutely. I mean, our main thing is about access. And so the way that it works, like you said, is anybody can tune in when we're live or there is always something rebroadcasting 24 seven for free. Uh, we also have an app uh, on that's an iPhone app and you can actually there watch. You may not know this. Uh, you I can did watch. not know that. And you just lit me up. I'm about <laughs> to download it as we talk. <laughs> Please do. Um, on the iPhone app, you can actually get a free lesson every day of any class. So that's really cool because even if the one of the, you know, five plus classes that are always playing for free live is if you want to check out something else, then you can check it out uh, by lesson one lesson for in a 24 hour period. And oh, I, I need to download that. Actually, you just got me really excited. And, Apple and TV too. the reason I started with talking creative live before we got into you and my apologies for that, but is because you've brought us kind of a special thing and I'm not going to say what it is yet. But coming up in just a minute, I'm going to tell you what this special thing is that Kenna brought for you guys, the viewers, that's that's really, really cool. So Kenna Klosterman is the host at Creative Live, but you are also a very accomplished photographer. And somebody said to me the other day, oh, Kenna Klosterman, Creative Live. I love her. She 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 does photography, too. You are very accomplished. So let's talk about you for a minute. Thank you. How do you describe yourself as a photographer to people? I describe myself as a travel and street portrait photographer. Interest. So not street photography, street portrait, which kind of fits the image we're going to talk about today. Exactly. I kind of came up with that in terms of when I when I talk about how I connect with people in my portraits when I travel, a lot of it is on the streets and as you know, the image we're going to talk about, but it's not your traditional, um, you know, documentary, just street photography where it's off in the distance, kind of the you had Valerie Jardine on and and that was, you know, uh, the it's a different type of street photography. Yeah. It, it, and, and really street portrait is a phrase you need to stick with because it really answers it, right? It, it has the street photography feel, rarely in black and white for you. Most of your stuff is in color. It has the emotion and the feel of a human being being in it as opposed to a scene that's transpiring in front of you, which, which I love. But along with a travel photographer, 
You are a sought after speaker and MC. You are, as I mentioned, the host of Creative Live and you are a tour leader. And your tours are really interesting to me because you do your own in Cuba, right? I do. Um, I travel to Cuba. Um, I do that on my own or with John Gringo, who is one of an amazing photographer and uh, educator here on Creative Live. He was so just he on this week, I think. Yes, just uh, doing his his big fundamentals of photography class. Uh, that is, I would say, the number one class I recommend to people when they talk about what is like this the main photography class at Creative Live is definitely that one for all around photography. And you also with John do uh, Tanzania. Yep. This Kenya. summer, we're doing a Tanzania and Kenya African Safari. And then we did just announce for February of 2019, Bhutan, which I'm so excited about because I haven't actually been there. Yeah, that and sounds kind of cool. And, and by of, the way, you yes. said 2019. Yes. So people understand they're announcing these that far in advance because they book. So if you're interested, the blog post is at thisweekinphoto.com. I'll have links to all of that. You can go research it, see how much it is, see what you're going to get for it. And in these, you get the ability to have a fantastic tour guide take you, you on a specific photograph type tour that can help you out. Along with being the photographer and the tour photographer, there's a couple things on your resume that kind of stuck out to me as I was researching you for this interview, right? Adorama TV, which again is a well-known online training site. But they don't just do training. They do kind of documentary stuff. And you were their field producer for for a series of shows uh, through the lens, Cuba. Correct. And in looking that up, there's, I think, seven or eight episodes of that. Yes, it was an incredible experience. And I was honored for them to hire me along with my uh, Cuban counterpart, Alain Gutierrez. And uh, they had seen that I do a lot of work in Cuba. And so um, so we organized everything for the Through the Lens series, which was a partnership with Sony as well. And we went down and we were just there for a little bit over a week and shot the entire uh, documentary web series uh, that was showing Cuba uh, through the eyes of a cast of uh, six photographers and it was just an incredible experience that's a that see it's ideas like that that I think put photography in front of more people right yeah. you know what I mean because yeah. it's not just so many people would just go film a documentary on Cuba yep been done but filming it through the eyes of still photographers Filming it from the idea of freezing moments in time, right, is so unique. I love that. Was that your idea? Was that their idea? No, no. It's a. They have a series, the Through the Lens series, that goes to different parts of the world. And so um, they reached out to me uh, as a Cuba specialist uh, for that particular type. So what was amazing is that I was able to work with them to develop the content of the actual places that we went and that we brought them to, to photograph. And so it was just the coolest thing ever. One of the reasons I love being a guide is I get I get joy from bringing other people joy and the discovery experience. And photography in Cuba is like no other in terms of the discovery of amazing images everywhere you look and people and things to experience. But I have now, since I've been going there for four years, I have my people and my places that I love to go. And so the ability to have kind of almost my Cuba um shown and told through through all of this these photographers was it was an incredible experience well and and it should be noted you are really kind of a well-known and respected you know expert as it were on on cuban photography uh cuba only instagram you've got it you've got an instagram feed for cuba only it's called cuba photo correct and inc 361 named you one of the eight beautiful instagram accounts to discover cuba which was really awesome. So yeah, thank I you, mean, Inc. 61. <laughs> seriously. University of Washington. And I should mention you're in Seattle, right? Correct. Okay. So you're Washington based. University of Washington did an exhibit of 60 Cuban photographers and you curated that. That's correct. I work with a um, an organization, a school in Havana that is run out of a one car garage, uh, and it's of uh, the home of these um, two photography instructors. And so I bring my groups, 
uh, I've established a relationship with them and I bring my groups and we do photo walks. So it's Cubans and um, and wherever the other travelers are from, mostly from the US. And we go and walk through Havana together and then go back to the photo school and and their home and have a big Cuban pig roast. And, and so I wanted to, I was asked to do an exhibit um, at the University of Washington um, at this one, this tower building and by a friend of mine who curates the exhibits there. And I said, great. And then I thought about it and said, well, why, why do my photography from Cuba when I have access to all of these Cuban photographers and I could bring their work here to the US? And it's amazing for them and it's amazing uh, for the people here at UW to see the Cuba through the eyes of Cuban photographers, not me. And so it was a very cool experience. It was up for three months earlier this year and um, just I just loved it and hope to to continue to travel that exhibit as well. And and you've been this is not your first podcast. You've been on the Candid Frame, the Angry Millennial. You've been featured on Resource Travel, DP Review, Adorama TV. So basically, we've kind of laid the groundwork, right? Kenna Klosterman is a well-respected photographer and Cuba specialist on photography. So if you're looking to do a tour, by the way. This is this is your thank goal. you, Steve. So that kind of brings us up to the to the kind of gift that you brought the viewers. Uh, you emailed me and said, hey, would you like to offer a coupon, a discount code to your viewers for creative live? To which my response was, yes, please. <laughs> and you've done that. So for the viewers, this will also be in the blog post so that, you know, so you can find it there. But a 20 percent discount on creative live. And the code is TWIP20, T-W-I-P-20. That'll get you 20% off. But here's the, the, the deal. It expires May 31st of 2018. And you ready for this? One per person. And it's limited to 2,500 people. So you want to use that coupon. The first 2,500 people are going to get it. So make sure you're aware of that and jump on it quick if you're interested. So let's get into your photo here. And just just an aside there, like put a bunch of things in your shopping cart to use it. I'll just leave it. Leave yeah, it it's 20 percent off. It's one per person. It's not one item per person. Correct. Right. Correct. It's one coupon per person, Correct. but it's 20 percent off whatever you want. So as an example, some of my favorite stuff on Creative Live, Zach Arias. Right? Awesome. You got to go look Love at the Zach Arias Zach. stuff because... <laughs> Very few people teach like Zach Arias. Uh, Renee Robin is in there. Mm -hmm. You've Amazing. got fantastic posing classes and editing classes, really on Photoshop classes, whatever it is, boudoir type, whatever Business. you want to do, whatever type of, of photography area you want help in. I sound like a commercial now. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. I'm talking and it just hit me. It's a commercial. Again, I've been watching Creative Live for so long. I really am passionate about the way they do business. Go Anyway, so let's Thank get you. into your shot here. Great. This shot that's in front of the viewers right now of this beautiful lady in Cuba, where, where exactly is this? So this photograph is um, in an area called Central Havana um, or Central Havana. There is an area that a lot of people first go to is Old Havana or Havana Vieja. And we like to get I like to get outside of um, just that very much heavily touristed area. And so Central Havana is just an awesome place to walk around and to interact with people because in Cuba, life happens on the streets. It really, really does. And so people are so friendly uh, and open to being, you know, to being photographed, to to interacting with you. So this was in a street in central Havana. Is there do you, is there a name for this photo? I mean, in my head, it's Egg Lady, but <laughs> I don't generally name uh, my images unless it was um for something that particularly needed a name. Um, so so for me, a lot of people you will see eggs being delivered. Um, I've got a photo of these egg carts um, that you see in the corner um, of a bicycle with like a stack of them, maybe like this high up, I'm off the screen, uh, but being transported over a ferry uh, by bicycle. So you see a lot of those eggs and, um, and, and cigars like are sitting on top of them as well. It, 
Oh, is that what that is? Are those cigars? Yep. yep. <laughs> so, and that's the interesting thing to me about wanting to go to Cuba, right? It's not just, it's not just different people. It's a culture really like we don't, we don't see here in any of our neighborhoods. R- real quick, the technical end. Sure. What camera was this shot with? So these days I shoot with a Canon 6D. Uh, so it's still, it's full frame, uh, but it's about, the body is about half the price of the 5D. When I bought it, it was the 5D Mark III was, would have been the, the comparison. And uh, I don't need the number of focal points uh, because I don't do a lot of, um, ha- you know, serious action photography or what have you. Um, so for me, the 6D works beautifully. What lens? So this is the 24 to 105, which uh, F4, of my which, favorite is, lenses. which is my general walking around um, when I'm traveling, especially in kind of narrow streets like this. I also usually have my 70 to 200 with me, uh, which is also great in Cuba. There's a lot of long streets and you can get that sort of beautiful compression going on with all the windows and, and, and things happening in the streets. Uh, but when I'm in sort of that narrow streets, I like to use the, that 24 to 105. The 24 to 105 was my go-to lens for years. It's sitting next to me here. It's nice. F4, super sharp. Is this the newest version or the original? It's not. It's an older one. It's the original. I'm actually uh, really eyeing the 24 to 70 right now. Oh, yeah. Um, as I haven't chart. purchased. That's a great yeah. lens. And do you know what your yeah. exposure was on this? I do. So this was, it was ISO 400. I was at F4. And it was at um, one four hundredth of a second. Um, okay, so it's a nice, nice outdoor day then. Ex- yeah, likewise. exactly. Exactly. I usually, uh, when I'm walking through the streets, I'm either in aperture priority or I am in manual. And I think it kind of depends for me if there's a lot of shadows, if the light is changing, then I might be in aperture priority. But if I'm just out in the same light, then then I usually try to get into um, and be in manual mode. Uh, but I think also for people and if people are, she's sitting um, on the stoop, but if people are moving, I think that's why I was probably up at um, ISO 400, just so I had a little bit of flexibility. You to shoot at auto action. white balance? I do shoot at auto white balance, yep. Okay. I shoot, I shoot in raw, so. Yeah, I, I've had this uh, this debate with people so many times now, and it's just like, no, just shoot raw, please just shoot raw. Um, so as you're walking around Cuba, I'm kind of curious. Do you walk around with the camera on a rapid strap and you're always ready to go? Is it in a messenger bag? I mean, because this type of this type of environment and scene changes so fast. I'm assuming you want your camera at hands ready. Usually in this scenario and on this particular day, because I was also with a, a group of people that I was guiding around. And I definitely, I do have black rapid strap. So I had camera out, um, probably had my little think tank, you know, pack on. And I love think tank gear. Uh, so do I. Um, and was, um, yeah, just out to interact and photograph. Um, so, so in this case, not trying to hide that fact. At well, all. which which is kind of why I asked that, actually. Do you ever, you know, in Europe, some places people say you don't want to walk around with a camera because you can become a target. And and in America, at least, let's be honest, over all the years that there was issues traveling to Cuba for Americans, every other country in the world traveled to Cuba. But we as Americans really don't understand Cuba very well. So do you do you when you're walking around with a camera, do you ever feel not safe? Do you feel totally safe? I have never felt as safe in a foreign country as I do in Cuba. And I really? can say that full stop. Um, it is an incredibly safe country. And, um, you know, you always have to be smart about what you're doing. And, but I have no problem with gear. I have no problem walking around with gear on my own. Um, it's very safe. I love Misconception, that. very much. So... Here's the here's the sixty four thousand dollar question. You're walking around Cuba, taking pictures. To me, mentally, Cuba is a photography time machine, right? You see the video, you see the photographs of the old 1950s cars, and they're still carrying eggs on bicycles, right? As you're walking around, though, street photography, like we talked about, might be hiding the camera by your hip and taking a shot. You're doing portraits of people you don't know. 
Right. And there are photography classes where they tell their students, go take 10 portraits of people you don't know on the street. That is such an art and a skill to walk up to somebody you don't know and try and get a portrait taken, let alone transplant you to a foreign country. How do you get this beautiful woman to sit and smile at you while you take her picture? So it's um, something that I actually teach a a class um, at like WPPI and Photo Plus on this, all about capturing uh, authentic portraits and especially of strangers. And so I've kind of I had to look at it when I was asked to teach a class and kind of break it down um, as to as to what my approach is. Um, I'm a naturally uh, a people person, and and so what I realized for myself is um, that my number one tip is you have to be present, uh, and so you have to be there and really be there in the scene uh, versus thinking about a whole bunch of other things, um, and that's what travel does for me, it makes me very present. And so as does photography. So kind of combining those two things. But going back around to um, to the uh, interacting with people. um, Can I give you my like little five? I have like a five tip thing. Oh, please do. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So because I'm not going to lie. This is an area I have trouble with. Right. And I'm I stand on stages in front of 10,000 people I'm seeing concerts sometimes walking up to one face-to-face individual is a totally different thing. So so the first thing for me is eye contact. And so, and, and that'll open the door. Uh, so I make eye contact with someone if they quickly look away, if they put up their hand and, you know, go like this, because I have my camera out. So that's kind of a first clue. I'm clearly, uh, a, I'm clearly not a Cuban. Um, well, not clearly. I could be a Cuban, but, um, uh, but with the the sort of the gear that I have, it's probably um, seemingly obvious. Uh, so making eye contact, and that kind of opens the door. Number two is body language, and so um, my approach is always whether it's Cuba or anywhere is to definitely maintain a very open body language. And, you know, we have some incredible classes even completely on body language when it comes to interacting with whether it's your clients or um, other people. And, and so um, not, you know, being closed or crossing my arms or being rigid, and that body language kind of it's energy as well. Um, And, and so, uh, so those two steps will kind of give you that open invitation or not. And then if I do approach a person, uh, because if I am wanting to get that connection with them, for me, the authentic street portraits are ones where you are looking into their soul uh, and looking deep into their eyes. So in order to establish that connection, um, I'm usually, I usually don't have that 70 to 200 lens on. Uh, it is that closer proximity. So if it is somebody who speaks English or speaks my language. I'm not fluent in Spanish. I can, I get by. Uh, but I then would, if it was an English speaker, I would then pay them a compliment. So I love those earrings. Where did you get them? Nice. Um, so establishing something uh, where you are, you are, you are um, giving them something you are, or you're acknowledging something. You're trying to make a little bit of a connection. You've and become usually, a positive influence on their day. That's right. And, and a compliment can usually do that. Um, so if you've made it through to the compliment, then it's about establishing a little bit of trust. And what I like to do is ask somebody a question um, as uh, in addition to that, like, oh, those earrings are beautiful. Where did you get them? I love your nails. You know, if they if they have painted nails um, and then uh, but it, it's a little bit different with this particular woman. Um, but um, but that's kind of my strategy is complimenting and then building trust by getting them talking so if you're just sitting here talking 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 to them you know like what are you doing but if you start getting them engaged people love to be heard right right and so that is just a way to make that uh, that quick energetic connection Uh, and then 
step number five for me is then just embracing your craft. So you've got to have everything ready to rock um, so that you're not fiddling around with um, with your settings as you're trying to get this person um, to to be a part of this experience with you. She's not um, going to be a half an hour model for you. Yeah, no, that's that's not the setup. That's not the situation at all. Um, so, so eye contact, body language, compliment, uh, establishing trust and then uh, embracing your craft. But then I do also have a bonus tip, which is what happened with this image as well. And I have oh, a little, sh- okay. I have a little show and tell. Um, so in addition to all those things, my favorite piece of advice or the, my favorite thing to do when I travel and am walking through the streets is to have this Fuji Instax, um, which allows me to create these little, the little Instax portraits. It's an Instamatic camera. Correct. And so what I do is I love to, before I photograph someone, I, I, I ask them if I can make their portrait and I kind of, even if they don't speak the same language, I have one out and I kind of motion, like I wanna give you, this is for you. I wanna gift you something. So it's not just about, and they so often are kind of confused, like, what do you mean? And then when you, take the image and then it starts coming out of the camera and they're like oh what is this and that can that can go from someone really not wanting you to to make their portrait to seeing themselves in in an image that they then get to keep and people who may not have any photos of themselves or any recent photos of themselves and therefore it's it's a very different exchange um and i've you know, it just it makes me happy to be able to gift um, these just little prints. So what a that's, wonderful idea. Yeah, it's not um, just as an icebreaker, but really as a cultural exchange in many mm-hmm, ways. Mm-hmm. You know, forget the photography side of it. Y- you you have that's a friendship almost introduction as opposed to I'm never going to see you again. Let me snap a shot and be on my way. That that person, this woman will always remember you. Exactly. And the really cool thing um, about this woman, and I have a couple other people um, similarly, actually, I have probably a handful of people now that I think about it, is that I saw her again. And I've seen some people again in my I've been to Cuba now eight times. And when I saw her again on that same street, with the it was actually with the through the lens crew um, for Through the Lens Cuba. And I don't know if she remembered me or not. It was like two years later. Um, and But I remembered her and I remembered the exchange. And so I went up to her and and she grabbed me and kissed me on the cheek. She remembered you. And the people who I was with, they just it, it was our first day i think that was their first day in cuba and they just melted and it just it warms my heart because one of them at the end of the trip we talked about sort of some of our our highlights and that and them seeing me engage with her again uh, was was one of the people's highlights and it was just it's a really beautiful thing i've had people cry when i give them the print um the little instax um, you also can have uh, you know, hordes of kids. You have to be careful where you pull it out. <laughs> because oh, I can imagine. Yeah. You could have hordes of kids come over, uh, which is super fun as well. But well, I love it, doing it with women, um, with older women uh, and I mean, kids as well. But it's a it's a really special travel tool. It's just such a great it's when you think about it, it's really a really great idea. It's so simple, right? Here's a picture and I'm giving, I'm not going to say to you, I'm going to mail you this shot. Here it is right now. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a bad person, right? I'm nice. I'm here, but let's go back to when you didn't know this lady Mm -hmm. and you wanted to shoot this and okay, you talked to her and you took an Instax and you gave her the Instax. Still, she's sitting on this stoop. You as a photographer, as you're getting ready to, to photograph this portrait and she's smiling so beautifully. I mean, it's almost like she's about to invite you in for coffee. <laughs> do you pose her? Do you do you 
ask them to did you ask her to sit in that spot? I mean, how much how much control over the scene, as it were, do you take in your head as you're doing this? For me, it's all about creating the composition. So uh, so there are times if I have maybe kids that are I've engaged with that maybe I would ask them to go stand somewhere else, but usually not. Um, so so I was definitely not going to ask this woman who's in her 80s, I think she was, to, to get up and move. So for me as the photographer, it's about creating that composition as I want. So you can tell that I'm down on her level. Um, I'm, I'm all the way out at 24, I'm getting a little bit, you know, close to her. Uh, and just kind of, for me, it, it, part of the reason maybe it called to me was that the color of her dress it matches the door behind her. Um, and, and so I, I'm usually, it's, it's maintaining that connection from the quickly from the creating the connection to the camera and that's where i think a lot of people can lose the connection and i don't know i don't know if it's an energetic thing um it's again she not only did did was i not speaking fluent spanish with her she actually couldn't speak um she so it was definitely uh more of an energetic connection well, see, and, and I picture tourists, even with a guide, right, going through streets, finding somebody like this, but they're intimidated. They want the picture and they know the lady will let them take the picture because the person in the group in front of them took a picture of the lady. But they're afraid to. Afraid's the wrong word. They stand there and take a picture down as she's sitting there and they move on thinking that's my Cuba picture. Mm hmm. The idea that you were you had the wherewithal to realize, no, 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 I level, compose the things that speak to me about this picture, the eggs and and the cigars, hands down. Right. That says they're eggs sitting on a front porch, not in a refrigerator. Right. But also the weathered door, mm -hmm. the textures is a good way to work. Mm -hmm. the, the textures that are in this image. The weathered door, the worn walls, the fact that there's like a three inch, four inch gap under the door, the separation of the tiles and this older weathered lady that is looking at you with just this happy life is great. And it's inviting, you know what I mean? It, it kind of it kind of pulls you into her world. But you mentioned you shoot raw, which means you also, this is not pure photojournalism out of camera. You do Correct. post. Correct. What do you use for post? Light, I'm guessing Lightroom Photoshop? I'm a Lightroom user. Um, I have Photoshop, but for the type of photography that I do, I usually can definitely get by without having to go into Photoshop. And in, in Lightroom, on a shot like this, what do you normally do post-wise? For this shot, I mean, it's pretty basic. Um, I check out the white balance to test out if I, you know, liked what Auto got, but definitely, you know, kind of starting there. I think for this shot, I lightened up the shadows in inside a little bit um, to bring you in, so it wasn't too much of a, a harsh. Contrast. Using a shadow slider, or did you brush mm -hmm. it in, or? Um, I think I use the slider, but then I also I have a lot of the uh, little points of just adjustment local brushes, yeah. local adjustment brushes. So maybe darkening the outside, making sure the tones. I usually do a little bit of clarity, um, not too much, especially with a a, a person or woman um, with the wrinkled skin already, um, or. And I don't do a I don't do a huge amount of of um, saturation boost. Usually, don't really touch that so much. I do like the color tones on this are um, are are more muted. Um, I do like vibrancy in Cuba photos, um, and I wanted to maintain that color of her dress again. That that kind of matches through to the to the back. But um, that's I mean that's about it. Not not a whole lot amazing photo i mean really there's so much realism in this photo um because she is looking just straight into your eyes and i don't know if you notice this but as you move it's one of those she's posed so perfectly as you move it's like a disneyland effect really her eyes follow you yes. no they do it's it's really cool 
So there is one more post question that yes. I have because you did mention that you check white balance. So I'm curious because you shoot on auto white balance. When you do white balance, do you do white balance to taste because by dragging uh, a white balance, a temperature slider and a tint slider because you like warmer, you like whatever? Or are you more of an eyedropper sampling on the eggs, which should be white or the dress or? So it's funny you asked that as I was kind of looking at this when I picked this, when we picked this photo and was looking at it again, um, I kind of test out a bunch of things. So I do the eyedropper, do the eyedropper, um, not on the eggs, more on something neutral like the egg uh, cartons. Um, okay. And then I will also then kind of take the, I will, I will slide back and forth um, on both, um, both of them, the tint and the other so that I can really test it out. I, I kind of, I think when I first started using Lightroom, I was much more timid. Now I'm much more, well, this clearly is too much and this clearly is too much. So kind of just tweaking it down. But I, I often test out the dropper um, because often that's that gets me really close to where I want to be. And that's that really is the question is where do you want to be? In other words, are you looking for photojournalistic realistic colors? Obviously, you said the colors here are muted. Or are you looking are you, are you looking to be accurate to what your eye saw at the moment or are you looking to be what's pleasing to the eye even if that day it was super cool and you like it better warmer? That's a great question. I mean, I, I think I think I generally go for pretty uh, straight on more photojournalistic real. Uh, I, I know a lot of people have kind of maintained a certain tonality or a certain uh, look that uh, is consistent across all of their images. Uh, I I like to um, kind of get to where I where I want it to be. Sometimes it's sometimes it is a little bit colder. Sometimes it's a little warmer. So I don't have a this is the same look and feel or personal preset or you know th anything that I have created to be just the kind of look. Right. Um, I, tr I try to stay pretty true to what I saw. Uh, I love your work. And Thank you. Really, I'm, I'm so glad I got you on because people need to know that the host at Creative Live is not just emceeing and introducing world-class photographers. She's a world-class photographer. So people need to see your work more. If they want to find out more about you, what's your website? It is Kenna K photo. So my last name is Klosterman. So just Kenna K photo.com. And first of all, just I'm honored. So thank you to, to say uh, that is truly humbling. So thank you. Well, yeah, I don't need to say it. Yeah. You, you and Valerie shoot stuff that I can't do. Hmm. And I, I go around like at WPPI one year, I walked around with a friend of mine, Troy Miller, and who was just on this, as we're recording this, he was on the, the This Week in Photo this week with Frederick. And Troy is clicking and, and I'm shooting stuff and I'm looking at it. And next thing I know, I look at the back of his camera and he just, he sees stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You guys can look at a street and see a composition, I look at a street and I see a street and I want to I want to get better at that. It's just as as a concert photographer, I I don't normally see that through my lens and I want to get better at it. You're on Facebook, Kenna yep. K Photo also. Yep. Uh, you're on Twitter, Kenna K Photo. Correct. You're on Instagram, full name. Correct. Kenna Klosterman. And Creative Live is creativelive.com. Correct. Creative Live you're everywhere on social creative live everywhere on social and if people want to know more about your tours is that available through kennakphoto.com correct yep including the ones that you do to to africa and and bhutan with john so the some of them are are posted on there but then they basically link back to uh john's website uh, which is johngringo.com and that's g-r-e-e-n-g-o and j-o-h-n at johngringo.com. So the okay. full, uh, some of those tours go through him. So the full information is there. People can always, I've got a contact me form on my website. People can always reach me there. Um, and then that second Instagram account, whereas 
just my Cuba work is the at Cuba photo. Uh, you mentioned that earlier, but just want to throw that one in there too. Yeah. And all the, all the workshop links and all of that will be in the blog post. So awesome. head to thisweekinphoto.com. You'll see a little blurb that I wrote about Kenna and then a gallery of photos. And at the very bottom of the blog post, every blog post that I do has links to everywhere on earth, pretty much that you can find Kenna Klosterman. So go look her up, show her some love, give her, give her some follows. And again, 20% off at Creative Live. It ends at the end of May, May 31st. It's gone, but it's good for whatever you buy. You could buy 10 classes, right? You could buy the store and it's 20% off. The discount code is TWIP20, T-W-I-P 20. It's limited, however, to the first 2,500 people that redeem it. So go do it right away if you want to make sure that you're not too late. So Kenna, to say thank you is an understatement. It's so nice, like I say, to finally meet you in person. I appreciate you're giving up so much of your time today because you're in the Creative Live podcast room right now. That's right. Well, thank you. And and just another note uh, to to everyone in terms of Creative Live, we always love to hear from our worldwide audience. So if there are things you want to see, if there are things we could be doing better for you all, uh, just let us know. Uh, and then on the Kenna tour side, if there are places and destinations that you want me to create new tours, uh, let me th- know that as well. Tours by request. Tours by request. <laughs> yeah, that's a website. Toursbyrequest.com. Somebody's somebody's already got it, probably. Love it. Thank you so much, Steve. It really was a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, it's been an absolute joy. Thank you very much. Again, to everybody for watching. Thanks. Don't forget, you can subscribe at thisweekinphoto.com. The advantage to subscribing to a podcast, by the way, some of you watch it on YouTube. Some of you watch it on the This Week in Photo Behind the Shot page. The advantage to subscribing is they get delivered to your podcast app automatically. You don't have to go look for them, but drop us a review in iTunes. My name is Steve Brazel. As always, I'm your host. You can find me at Steve Brazel pretty much everywhere except Facebook. Steve Brazel Photography. It's like Brazil, but with two L's. So again, thank you very much for joining us for this episode behind of uh, Behind the Shot. We will see you next time. Hey there, I'm Frederick Van Johnson. Thanks for checking out the TWIP Network on YouTube. If you'd like to keep up to date with the shows we're putting out, be sure to click subscribe. And while you're at it, give us a thumbs up. You can also subscribe on thisweekinphoto.com where you'll find lots of other great photography shows. Thanks for watching the TWIP Network on YouTube.